So, Obsidian made a new RPG, and as soon as I found out, I just threw my money. We'll bump it up a little bit, because we are scared of the dark. Why stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier, owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes, thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Here, mind the asterisk. Thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Oh, natural health regeneration. We definitely want. Let's hope the trip back to my lab is as easygoing as you are. All of that. Sure, why not? Let's put the rest into charm. Let's double down on... If I had this one's charisma, people might actually talk to me. You hear that? We're charismatic now. That'll be a new experience. Hmm. Yeah, let's be a medical technician. Because medical will probably be important, and we've got all that health region, so might as well capitalize on that. Oh, look at all these customization options. I could be here all day. Sure, let's do bright yellow. Sadly, we cannot do bright yellow skin. What happens if we put it all to the right? You know, it's not actually that bad. I guess they've idiot proofed it. Which is bad news for me. Because you know I'm the idiot. There. She looks a little bit more like an alien when you put everything to the left. Not something super long and impractical. Ooh. Or do I? No, I want the one where she's balding. And we could do a unibrow, but... Uh... That feels a little too easy. Sure, give her an evil mustache. That way it's people's own fault when they don't see it coming. Sure, let's deal with the blood of our enemies on our face. I mean, I know this guy's a criminal and all, but still makes you wonder why he decided to wake us up, huh? There, someone slit our throat. But it didn't take, fortunately for them. Let's be a young... Monster. Name. Since we have such a lovely mustache, we're going to name ourselves after someone who also has a lovely... Mustache. Mario. So it looks like Mario's really good at lying. Here you go, guy. I mean, I think there's a reason. Looks they to be your lucky day, my friend. Out in the 
on the little space. Not likely, bootlickers. <laughs> Initiate skip jump. There you are, wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on the Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies, saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Well... That's a heck of an introduction. Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. And not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm uh, all the colonists are counting on you. Yeah. Well, they're destined to be disappointed, but aren't they? kidding you ended unfortunately these little green things are awful cute wonder if we can kill them hey you come here now look you've tried the best now <laughs> now try the rest spacer's choice oh wow that stings I could patch him up. But 
I don't really feel like it, so... We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Someone grounded their ship illegally? I'll hunt him down for you. You'd better take my gun then. Uh, careful. It's worth more to the company than I am. All Spacer's choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Yes, nailed at that time. Attack. Well, all right, game. Not like I needed the excuse, anyhow. Hmm. Tactical dime dilation. Now oh, that sounds good. Who knew brain damage is actually beneficial? Hey! Get over here before you get yourself killed! Well, I suppose we'll talk to you. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Well, we got him to kill all the things for us. That was nice. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. Intruders are not authorized to access the unreliable's amenities, including the cargo hold's workbench. Oh, my bad. Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. I'm not here to misappropriate anything. I detect an elevated heart rate, indicating dishonesty. Please prepare yourself for lethal deterrence. Genesis procedures initiated. Disengaging airlocks. Preparing to eject all boarded parties in five, four, three, two, one. Is something supposed to be happening there, Ada? If you are still here, my deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. The uh, engineering five, I doubt a part like that. It's just sitting in a garage. Because apparently I know that. Huh. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the unreliable. Do you understand? Uh, yeah, I got it. Thanks. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. Work diligently, improve yourself, and you too can achieve middle management. Oh, isn't that nice? That's always what I wanted, you know, my lifelong dream, middle management. Let's put the most into dialogue. Let's see just how many fights we can actually just outright avoid. We're supposed to be heading to Edgewater to find a power regulator, so let's do that. Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, ma'am, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. Afraid we gotta dock your pay. Go 
got it all wrong. I'm a starship safety inspector. Oh, by the law. I'm so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. And the edge water is set up on the edge of a volcano, it looks like. Those guys must be geniuses. No, that's nice. Elevator music. The grease monkey, Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. This guy really is a genius. I see why you built your town on the edge of a volcano now. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. You must be the town boss. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. I don't work for Spacer's Choice? Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. I'm looking for a power regulator. The only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Thompson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Let me guess, you want me to do something for you before you help me? My proposition benefits the both of us. Please, hear me out. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. Well, you're clearly pretty evil, so I'll definitely help. Need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine, and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Sure. She can do all the Quit. fighting. I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. It just... It don't seem right to me, ma'am. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. About if what Mr. Thompson proposes to do is upright. Leaving Miss McDevitt's folk to their fate. Their neighbors. Kin. And maybe he can think of something else to try. Something we ain't. He used to go walking outside town. Maybe he found something that'll help. It's just an idea. That's all. No, that's stealing. Probably don't want to do that in front of her. Is what we're about to do, you know, stealing someone's power on the up and up? But what? I, I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked her to do? Yeah, cut off power. Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. 
So what do you advise? Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fold. Um, uh, what if it's not to save as many as possible? No, I'll look for it. I don't need to know more information than that you're paying well. Can't even tell what we look like now. It's probably a good thing when meeting new people. Ooh. It is a pretty volcano. I'll give it that. Keep turning on the spit outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? Now that you mention it, you don't have the look of an indentured laborer about you. Not nearly enough despair in your eyes. How can you see my eyes with a mask on? I'm not from around here. Hi, Miss McDevitt. Parvati. Are you still in the custom of collecting flowers? You're welcome to take your pick. I do apologize for visiting upon your intentions. You and yours are welcome here. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobaccorn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Well, she seems lovely. I guess we know which side we're on. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball, cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. Yeah, Reed sent me to make peace with you. Reed Thompson? You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace then? Uh, you're living off power, come back to the cannery, that's about it. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. I mean... Yeah, I've, I'm, I need your geothermal plant regulator thing for my ship. And so I'm gonna take it, so there's that. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? I need the power regulator. Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. I'll consider it, even though I won't. I trust you will listen to your conscience. Yeah. What are you? Talk? Oh, I thought for a second I was a talking rooster. Not quite that weird. So Zoe went out to become a bandit queen. Uh. Well, if that's the case, I think she kind of, you know, made her bed. You should probably let her lie in it. Found a flaw in you. <laughs> I did so bad against the, the uh reward one perk point dexterity and no maybe the next flaw will be a little less Flawed. Because that makes perfect sense.
way to go. I won't say it's a good way, but it was a way. Rerouting switch. Again, this will result in death or indentured servitude for all those nice people at the botanical gardens. Let's do it! Blast. Oh, is there still a chance to back out of it? That's nice of the game. But no, we're we're helping the dude who seems the most evil. Once we do this, there's no going back. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just I felt like I had to say something. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I was barely listening to you. Oh, well. Okay then. Redirect the power to Edgewater. That toot and canning factory is gonna be going into overdrive. We could convince the deserters to return, which we probably have a pretty good shot at, being as our persuasion is so high. But I don't know, is it cooler to make them come back willingly or die to the last trying to strive for freedom? What am I saying? Of course it's crueler to make them come back willingly. We're just gonna have to get out of this place the old fashioned way. Through trial and error. Lots and lots of error. Blade's okay. Is no one going to attack me even though I just destroyed your very way of life? That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? Well, it seemed like the cruelest option. Uh, this isn't personal. You killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. Yes, you're being unreasonable. It's almost like you're saying, give me liberty or give me death. And I just don't understand that. As long as Reed is to hear. Well, have fun starving out here. I'm going to go send it to your follow followers to indentured servitude. Talk to Adelaide one last time. Followers have decided to abandon you. How does that make you that. feel? The snakes come back. They're returning. Good for them. I'm glad. Back to the old cannery with Grace and Thomas and Stefan and all the others. I expected it'd end like this. Lived out here for years all by my lonesome. Only right that I'd die the same way. I expect you've done enough for the Vale. If you don't mind leaving an old lady with her thoughts, I'd be much obliged. You could still go back to Edgewater. It is too late, and I'm tired of talking. Uh, and I'm tired of listening to you. I got you your slaves back. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? 
Yeah, only the followers, not Adelaide. That's good enough for me. Adelaide and I have a history. It was unlikely she'd ever come back. But hope springs eternal. We are in your debt. I am authorizing you for a discount on all official Spacer's Choice products, courtesy of the people of Edgewater. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember to like if you like, and subscribe if you want to see more of the outer world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!